Welcome, everyone. <laughs> um, my name is Nick Aurea, and today we're going to be talking about advanced friction hitches. Um, this is a little different of a rendezvous than I've ever been to before, uh, but it's the best we can do given the circumstances, right? So, um, advanced friction hitches, first of all, before we talk about what they are, we're going to go we're going to get a baseline started on something that everyone knows uh, or almost everybody knows. And we're going to start with the, um, uh, the bike hitch because I think everyone knows that unless you're one of those new tangled climbers that don't or a really, really old climber. Um, so we take, uh, let me get my, oh, you know what? We don't need to hunt yet. So we all know how to tie the Blake stitch. Three, four, we'll use the B53 version. That goes there. We'll go under one, two, three. Okay, cool. Now, when, when we're looking at the old school Blake stitch, carabiner goes right around here. And possibly you might have a, uh, a knot in the middle right here. And of course you'd have a stopper knot of some sort at the end. Okay. Now this is all fine and dandy. It totally works, right? But the trade-off is, and now while in the tree, let me make like I'm connecting here, my built-in harness. You can't disconnect. You have to untie this. And you guys comment if the street noise in the background is too noisy. We've got some doors opening to get more air and better light, but uh, it might also mean more noises. You got to untie, then take your rope out, put it where you want it. So some genius somewhere figured out uh, that if you use a different piece of rope, you could tie this. Switch this side now and go to the spliced end. Okay. Put this one here. Now, I'm not going to do the whole thing because I think you guys know where I'm going with this already. But if we use a separate piece of rope, like so, and let me clip it onto my fancy harness here. Now I could have this piece of rope tie my Blake hitch with that. And then rather than untying it when I need to move my tie-in point, I can disconnect the end of it, leave the Blake hitch tied in, and then move this around wherever I need to move it. And uh, that's kind of the very beginning of the advanced friction hitches of using a split tail uh, you're still using the same kind of rope as a Blake's hitch, uh, and you're still using the Blake's hitch or something like that. Um, but the system is a little more advanced because you have this two-ended system. Uh, the other cool thing about this setup is that you put a lot of wear on the split tail on the blue piece of rope here, and then you can just take that piece and throw it away rather than cutting four feet off the end of your rope. Um, so split tails are where it's at. And that's what we're gonna be talking about for the rest of the uh, program today. Um, any comments about the noise yet? I think it's really noisy for me here in the background, but maybe not so much for you guys. You know, Nick, we hear the noise. Nick, can you hear us? I can. We hear the noise, it's not too much, but I do have a question, I believe, from Nick from the audience. Sure. Nick, I have uh, allowed you to talk. Would you like to unmute and ask your question? I, uh, I think there must be some confusion because I don't have a question. Okay, <laughs> sorry, that was from earlier. Thank you, sorry about that. Okay, um, all right, all right, so. Moving ahead. Now we have a, yes. I'm sorry, I just said moving forward. Oh, okay, okay. So one of the quasi-essential components of the split tail system, the advanced friction hitch system, is having the splice on the end. You can do it without a splice by tying in any knot, any termination knot. Um, but when you move to having a splice or a stitched eye, preferably spliced, 
um, you'll have a much cleaner setup. Things will be a lot less clunky on your harness. It'll actually take up less space. Uh, it's stronger, which doesn't really affect us too much, um, but it's just so much easier to use. So for the rest of this uh, presentation here, we're gonna be using uh, Spliced Eye. And um, then for now, we're gonna show what I call the least advanced, advanced friction hitch. Karina, you can't zoom it in, right? Can you just move the tripod closer? Um, so the Prusik knot, the good old fashioned English Prusik, if we go around two times, that sometimes will hold. Uh, again, I'm using a spliced INI hitch cord. Um, AKA a split tail, um, a double ended split tail, some people call it. And now I have that same functionality as with the Blake stitch and I can, I can either use two carabiners. I could put them both on the same carabiner, but now I have that same functionality where I can disconnect one, go around my branch on, uh, and move it. And this is, a, a, I think, a pretty big step up because with the Blake's hitch, you'll have a two foot long tail uh, between the harness and the actual hitch. And here I have about a six inch section. Um, and if I made this hitch cord shorter, we could have like conceivably nothing. Um, but that's kind of the beginning of the heart of the system. Uh, let me put my harness on here. Uh, got to give me a second to take everything off my harness. One moment. Should have had this ready before we started up the camera, huh? No worries. While Nick is preparing his gear, I will remind everyone that there is a live auction. Please visit the treerendezvous.com website and make a bid. Okay. Perfect timing, Pamela. <laughs> okay, so we'll throw the harness on here. in and in a moment we're gonna start hanging from things so I better get my helmet on okay there's one downfall to this system that I've set up here. And I get these both clipped into my harness. When you're used, if you're used to using, yeah, we're good down there. Um, if you're used to using the Blake's hitch, you can use that long bridge between your harness and the friction hitch uh, to your advantage. And you've seen climbers do this motion where you pull down and you kind of hold it with one hand and slide an arm's length upward to advance your friction hitch when you have a really short friction hitch you can't do that you can only go like a few inches at a time and uh, that becomes very tedious but this system wasn't meant to be used that way um, so that's where we enter the realm while uh, Chris is getting the next hardware I do see a question in the chat which is asking what harness does Nick have on and I will remind our audience to please do put uh, any specific questions in the Q&A, it helps us see them. Um, this particular harness is a tree flex harness. I think it was from around 2005 or something like that. They don't make them anymore. I absolutely love it. Uh, yeah, that's it. I, I go back and forth between this and my new tribe Onyx all the time. Um, okay, so it's two-handed motion here that we're doing. If you put a uh, micro pulley inside here and I'm just going to put this tiny little carabiner and clip that onto my harness as well. Now that gives me one-handed functionality where I can have 
my camera in selfie mode videotaping me because that's what tree climbing is all about, right? While my other hand is what's advancing the friction hitch. And this is the kind of what I see as the beginning of an actually advanced, advanced uh, friction hitch system. So um, this totally works and you don't need to use a full strength carabiner right here. This is a good place to put a keychain carabiner or a dog leash snap. Um, another cool thing is that you can even accomplish this without the pulley at all by just putting a carabiner or a lot of um, little accessory snaps will work right there. So now I can just pull and the friction hitch will be pushed up by that extra carabiner. Or if you want to go extremely minimalistic, you can take this whole system and I'm sharing this because I know as recreational climbers, we, we're not necessarily hopping out of the car and straight into the tree. Maybe there's a one mile or three mile hike between the vehicle and the tree. So um, it, with one carabiner, I can put on the end of the climbing line, the two tails of the hitch cord, and I can drop the, uh, my, the downside of my climbing line in and clip all of that in. So now I just went from three carabiners and a pulley down to one carabiner and I get that same functionality, um, one-handed operation while the other hand's drinking a latte. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Wait, I can't hear you, Corinne. Should we zoom in? Yeah, can you guys see that just fine? I think that shows it pretty good right there. Um, the carabiner is just running through, uh, excuse me, the tail of the rope is just running through the carabiner. So that's the idea. Um, now, this is, I think, where we need to talk about the dirty little secret of the advanced hitch cords. Um, and it has to do with rope fibers. Uh, everything you see here is made out of polyester. This is a um, Yale tree focus rope. It's all polyester double braid. This one is Yalex, which is a polyester single braid. And polyester has a melting point of a little bit below 500 degrees. And 500 degrees are temperatures, uh, somewhere between four and 500 degrees are temperatures that you can generate while descending out of a tree, especially if you're going faster than you should be or, uh, or for really long distances. Um, and this is where the Blake's hitch has an advantage over a hitch cord like this one. The Blake's hitch is five wraps and it's a uh, thick diameter rope. Advanced friction hitches tend to be smaller diameter rope. And I think you can see that here that um, this is a 7 16 inch or 11 millimeter climbing line. And this is approximately 3 8 inch diameter hitch cord, uh, 9 millimeters, somewhere in there, uh, hitch cord. So when you descend, there's a lot of um, friction on a smaller area. It's a lot easier to melt uh, a polyester advanced hitch cord uh, because of the smaller diameter and smaller wear area. So obviously that means we have to go back to the Blake's hitch, right? Um, wrong. <laughs> That's where we step into using Okay, so I'm gonna hold this one really close to the camera and right around there. Uh, this particular one is called Veritas. It's also made by Yale Cordage. Um, the fibers that we're looking for in a advanced, advanced friction hitch, if I could call it that, um, are a lot higher melting points. So this particular one is made, by, uh, made out of Technora, uh, Kevlar, Vectran are also ones that are really good as the outer sheath. Uh, they have melting points somewhere around 800 degrees, 900 degrees, something like that. Uh, and then you can put a polyester core or whatever you want on the inside. And this is one that I've climbed in a lot and I've beat it up and it's kind of old. But if you look at the middle here where the wear is, nothing is melted. And in fact, there's a little bit of melting right here 
but that is the, um, uh, the colored fibers are polyester and that gives better grip. These uh, high strength fibers with the high heat resistance also are a little more slippery. So um, they typically will incorporate a little bit of polyester uh, in the cover. Uh, ocean polyester made by Tufelberger is one of them. Um, and I'm drawing, Bailout is one that's a solid Technora on the cover. Uh, that one's made by Samson. But uh, Beeline is super common and that's a, I think it's 50-50 blend of Technora and polyester on the outside. Uh, hold on one second, we'll wait for the siren to go by. Okay, so if we do our same kind of advanced hitch cord, uh, hitch, and just do that English prussic, I'm doing a two wrap prussic, which gives me one, two, three, little four fingers that are grabbing down. That might be enough, and we'll find out with this uh, little test right here. Nope, totally, ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, that works. Um, and it lets me down pretty good when I want to come down. It's a little too slippery, actually. Yeah, look, it shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> so that's a really good example of the um, high heat resistant fibers. So this is where I think we can start deviating from this prussic hitch and start looking at um, asymmetrical hitches. And when I say asymmetrical, if you look at this one, it's two wraps on the top, two wraps on the bottom, and both the tails coming out the same way. Um, we could put, if we scoot some of this rope around a little bit, we can put another wrap on one side. And this isn't something you can do with a, a loop. You, you can only do this um, with an I and I hitch cord. And so now it's asymmetrical. We have three wraps at the top and two on the bottom. Uh, I think that six wraps would have been a little too much. So now I have what we could refer to. Um, this is technically no longer an English Prusik. Now it's a Swabish knot uh, because it's asymmetrical. And it's specifically, it's a three over two because there's three on the top, two on the bottom. Um, and it's important to know how to talk about them because uh, when you communicate with other climbers, you can text them like, oh, dude, are you using Veritas on, on uh, tree focus rope? Uh, I weigh 180 pounds and I do that with a three over two swabish. And someone can calculate that into like, well, I'm a little lighter and my rope's a little skinnier. Uh, you know, and let's see. All right, now we're talking. And it's a little hard to pull down, but when I let go, it sucks. So now we got a good functioning hitch. Uh, let's put our slack tender on there. And we're about to see if this hitch that I concocted will meet um, the criterion for what I call a perfect hitch. And a perfect hitch needs to do, uh, I think, four things. We'll see. Um, one, when you sit down, it's got to grab you. Two, when you want to go down, it lets you go down. And this one, I got to kind of pull on it, but it will let me go down. Three, when you let go, it grabs you again. Um, and then number four, when you advance it, you should be able to advance it one-handed. And this one, I've got to put some muscle into it, but it works. So. Not perfect, but close to it. It does meet all four criterion, um, but this is the really cool part about the advanced friction hitches. If you started out being trained, um, learning the B53 version of the Blake's hitch, it's kind of one and done. Everyone's on the same thing and there's not a lot of variation. When you move to the advanced friction hitches, there is an infinite world, a never ending world of uh, variations that you can make by changing out the diameter of this cord, the length of the cord, um, the humidity on the day that you're climbing, uh, the, the rope that you're climbing on, the type of knot that you're putting on, the way you tie that type of knot. Some of them will function differently if you tie it left-handed or right-handed. There's just so many variations that you can start tweaking things if you don't want it to, you can see me kind of pulling down, you can change this around so that with one finger you can descend. And some climbers really do like that. Um, so 
let's talk about some of those changes. Uh, we're gonna switch out one thing here. Actually, hold on. Uh, so the, the swavish knot, are there any other questions? No times for questions. I think Pamela will interrupt us if there are. Not at this the time, Nick, but thank you for checking. Okay, all right. The Swabish knot has a, a cousin or a brother or a sister that is very similar to this, but um, I'm gonna start by wrapping it three times. Actually, we're gonna go four times, get crazy. And now the bottom one I'm gonna go the opposite direction as I did before. And you can see that the tails used to go in the same direction and now they're coming out in opposite directions. And this gives us some really neat functionality. Uh, I, I'm gonna turn this around and let's raise this up so you guys can see. Can you see all the way down to here? Frank? Okay, all right, we're good then. So if we take this slack tending pulley and put it just below and then put the two eyes on either side, um, it makes this really cool way to lock the slack tending pulley between uh, the legs of the hitch cord and it just makes it really, really clean. And you saw before when I had that pink carabiner in here, there was a lot of slop between the pulley and the harness and we kind of had to pull a bunch of slack out before it actually bumped up against the friction hitch. And now we only have about two or three inches until it starts um, pulling up the advanced friction hitch. And this is almost what I, almost the smoothest setup that you can have with an advanced friction hitch um, setup by putting the pulley between the legs. Um, now we pull this up. Oh, that's really good. One handed very easily grabs on really well. And then when I let, uh, let's see, lets me down really good. And in fact, with two fingers, it'll let me down. With one finger, it'll let me down. And it holds when I let go. So now we're at a spot that uh, this, we could say that's a perfect friction hitch, right? Um, probably, uh, but one little thing about the distal hitch is as you climb on it, this top wrap tends to it tries to come undone. So you spend a lot of time having to push it back up there and it functions differently when this top wrap falls down a little bit. So it's not perfect, perfect, but it does meet that criterion as long as you keep readjusting it. Um, so that's cool. I, I like it a lot. Uh, um, so, but what can we do to make this better? And there is one additional step. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one additional step that we can do, and it's by changing this pulley to one of these guys right here. And this is the hitch climber. What color should we go with? I think I like, you know what? Is Pat Mastinski watching? I thought I saw his name on there. I think we're gonna go the last one on the loop. Pat gave me this one. Hi, <laughs> Pat. Pat gave me this one at the rendezvous in Kentucky uh, many, many years ago. So three holes at the top of this thing. And if you've never seen this before, prepare to have your mind blown. Um, there are a bunch of different versions of it. The one that I'm using, it says Rapide right there or Rapid. Um, but anyways, that it's the smoother version. It's also a little more expensive. And if you're just using it as a hitch, uh, as part of your hitch cord system, you don't need the more expensive one. Um, but that's what Pat gave me. So that's what, what we're gonna use. So if you put this in the middle, just like before, and put the legs on either side, and then, Okay, so now, so far we have the exact same functionality. We pull here, it slides up, and one-handed on the harness, that works really cool. Uh, I'm gonna switch this carabiner right here. And now, that hole right there is just begging to have the 
spliced end of my climbing line clipped into it. Um, and what this allows me to do is, uh, just like before, if I do one-handed, it's adjusting the rope. But what I couldn't do before, and if I disconnect and just clip it off of the hitch climber and back onto my harness, if I just pull down, there's a lot of slop right here. I think you guys can see that on camera. There's a ton of slop. So if I clip, uh, let, me, let me do this one more time. When I pull down, the down rope obviously is pulling the up rope up, but nothing is really happening. And there's some wasted opportunities. So when we clip the spliced eye onto the hitch climber, when I pull down, the up rope pulls the hitch climber up, and that opens up a lot of opportunity to streamline the climbing system. Uh, it makes it so that with minimal motion, I'm able to advance my friction hitch uh, for free. So if you're a climber that uses a foot loop down below uh, or a foot ascender, um, you can do this, you can advance it no-handed by just stepping down on your foot ascender, foot loop, or in this case, the, the foot wrap or foot lock, however you want to do it. Um, and it'll go by itself, which is really cool. And then when you sit down, it holds you. Every other function should be exactly the same, that it, it'll grab when you want it to grab and let go when you, when you want to descend. Um, so that's pretty cool, right? I think so. Um, now, the next part is really important. We have to hydrate. <laughs> um, one second, I'm getting a little parched. And while we're doing self-care, including hydration, may I remind the audience that we are having an auction. Please help yourself to the items available at freeclimbingrendezvous.com. Thank you. Now, um, 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 I can't wait to go check out the auction items because I will try to win them all. Uh, Nick, before you start, there is a question in the question and answer. Why is the three holder better than the previous pulley? Ooh, good, good question. Um, so I showed when you pull on the down rope, it pulls the whole system up for you, which can be really valuable unless you accidentally do it when nobody's clipped into it. Or if someone's just being a jerk and they walk up to your rope and pull it up for you. If you take out the three holer and put, put the one holer back in there, They're not locked together. So pulling down on the down rope doesn't cause any action on your friction hitch. And even if you were clipped into the same thing, it will kind of do it, but it does it after capsizing the blue carabiner and then crunching up and advancing it. So the three holer connects the splice end of the rope to the, the hitch cord essentially. Um, and for what it's worth, there are other ways to accomplish this feature rather than the hitch climber. Um, CMI makes it a two hole pulley. I call it the Mickey Mouse for obvious reasons. Um, and this will do, if you look at these, they're identical except one has two holes on it. This one goes here. So this will allow you to have that direct connection. And when I pull down, the whole system goes up very easily. The, there's two downsides to the, to the Mickey Mouse, to the CMI versus the, uh, the hitch climber. One of them is if you look at the two holes on the CMI, they are directly on top of each other. So when you 
are sitting in your system, it squishes the whole entire uh, spliced eye, carabiner, hitch cord, and downside of your rope. It just squishes them together. And this one is offset uh, half an inch maybe between this hole and this hole right here. And it opens up a little more space. And I'll, let's see if we can see that on camera. I'm not sure if it will show up, but once you try both of these systems, you can feel it. See the orange one now, just for the fun of it. Okay. Yeah, I think, if, I bet if we showed this side by side, you would see it more. These are still definitely in contact, and I don't think we really want them spaced out super far, but there's enough space in here that you can reach your hand in easily to control the hitch if you wanted to. So that's one advantage. And then the other advantage is that the three-holer is way cooler than the two-holer. Um, the, the DMM hardware is just so sexy. It feels good having that around. But this one gets the job done if you want to try it. Um, okay. There so, is one other question. Oh, bring it uh, on. There is a question about, is your helmet going to be available at the auction? And I must admit, I've also wondered if your helmet, or at least a decal, will be available at auction later. That is not a decal. That's custom painted on. So, uh, no, no decals available. Um, hmm. Maybe I'll think about that for next year, a custom painted tree care. I Under like consideration. Helmet. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. So that's the system right there. And I believe that what I've shown here is the least advanced, advanced friction hitch that people might actually be using. The um, English Prusik that I showed before really is just as an example. Uh, I don't think folks are actually out there climbing with an English Prusik here and then this whole system because the English Prusik is a little, it's very basic and it has some limitations. Um, this is the first one that has the, the distal hitch here is the first one that has the tails coming out in opposite direction. Uh, so that it can come on either side of the, uh, the micro pulley right here. Uh, so let's look at a couple of other pitch cords. Um, yeah, and how are we doing on time? We've got tons of time, right? Oh, good. We're doing perfect here. Um, so let's, let's change it out. Oh, before we do uh, different pitch cords, I do want to show one thing. Um, this... This hitch cord right here is one that I spliced myself. The rope is like, I don't know, a dollar a foot or something like that. We have to look it up. Um, but if you buy one of these spliced, you're paying like 20 or 30 bucks for it because it's two splices on some expensive rope. Um, these ones are more affordable uh, and it is a stitched eye, which is full strength on the end. Um, and I think it's probably about $10 cheaper. We'd have to go look them up, compare side by side. Uh, they react differently. And a lot of people will argue that one is better than the other. And what they're really saying is that they prefer it better. Um, so if you look at the, spl the spliced eye, when I hold it horizontally, it remains really rigid because the tail of the rope goes inside and I can hold like, what is that about? Six to eight inches of it and it will hold itself where the, the stitched eye is kind of flimsy. And that can be good or bad. It depends on your preference and how you're setting up your system. Um, so let's do, um, we're gonna do a, a VT hitch right now and we'll do a five over two VT. So we'll go one, two, three, four, and five. And one wrap and another wrap. Okay, and then we'll put that with the VT is the Valdetain Tress. And if you speak French, you could probably pronounce it better. Um, okay, so that's the five over two VT with a stitched cord. Um, let's see what put this. I think that might work. All right. 
Um, so that's the five over two. And then we'll do this one up out of the way. Do the exact same thing. One, two, three, four, five over one, two. Even it up a little more. Okay. Five over two. I'll go with the camo tan, uh, desert tan colored pitch climber. Really goes well with the hot pink, I think. Okay. So, exact same setup on each one of these. And what I want to show is. What some people don't like is the spliced hitch cord, because this rope is thicker right here from the splice, that gets up and interferes with the hitch itself, meaning it functions that the hitch is operating differently here than it will here, even though it's the exact same cord on the exact same climbing knot, time tied the exact same way. Um, so, when you push this one up, you can see the rope down here in the braids. These are the wraps and these are the braids. The braids crunch up a little more before they go up. And the, um, the VT, excuse me, uh, with the spliced one, this stiffness right here will actually push, the, the stiffness of the braids will push the wraps up like that. And I see that as an advantage, personally. Some people don't like that it makes the hitch operate differently, but once you get used to it, you get um, this, this motion where you clip in, about to see if my SRT anchor is gonna hold steady. When, when I advance this, there's a few inches, and here there's not a lot, but if my hitch cord was a little longer, we might have four inches of what we call sit back. And that's the amount of when we go up like this and then we sit back and it extends a certain distance. I think that with a, um, what do you call it? A spliced hitch cord, I think I'm getting less sit back in there. So it's, uh, I don't wanna say one is better or worse. They're definitely, definitely different. And it's another fun thing to experiment with uh, to, to determine what you prefer. So I think we'll stick, uh, I think these are the more common, uh, the stitch ones. So we'll stick with that for the remainder of the class here. And I do wanna point out, we, we started out with this one because it's a common rope and it's very affordable compared to the advanced hitch cords. The advanced, advanced hitch cords, uh, these high heat resistant ones, I really don't think that you should be climbing on these on your climbing line. Um, they do make good lanyard adjusters. So um, uh, you're not, you don't tend to be doing as long runs on your lanyard as you do on your climbing line. So, um, okay, what were we gonna do next? Yes, oh, I thought there was a question. Um, all right, so there's our hitch cord. Let's talk about a few different uh, advanced friction hitches that you could swap this out with. So, so far we've covered this one. It's just an English Prusik with perhaps different numbers of wraps on the top and the bottom than the distal. And as a guideline, the distal, you usually have more wraps on the top and less on the bottom. So three over two or a four over one are probably the two um, combinations. And here we have a five over two. And as you toy around with these, you can find out that, woo, you can find out that having a different combination, if I just do four wraps, now that'll give us more room to make more braids. So now we have one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three. So now it's a four over three VT. It's gonna function a little differently because the wraps and the braids have different purposes. They, they act differently in the hitch. Um, 
So that looks pretty smooth, actually. Let's switch this. Okay, let's see how this one reacts. Okay, take a look. Yeah, it's holding me really well. And then for, um, yeah, for descending, it's letting me descend really easily. That's cool. And it's grabbing on pretty reliably. So now let's just see how it advances. Oh my gosh, it advances like butter. Look at that. Even after, let me weight this really hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's our whole building shaking. Um, so there we go. It's letting me down nice and smooth. I might have to start climbing on this one with two fingers. I think it's going to let me advance it. Look at that. With no no effort at all. So that's pretty cool to see that um, that little bit of a change made, switched it from me having to reef down on it, uh, excuse me, from me having to lean into it a lot to now being able to advance it um, two fingered. Okay, let's go to a whole new, uh, whole new hitch cord. And the first one I wanna do is, you got a question? Someone is asking for you to reconfirm what the orange one that should not be used for oh, climbing. Yes, this is a single braid rope. I'm going to hold it up real close so you guys can see it. Um, does that show? Is there someone that are trying to give me? Um, just tell them we're doing something right now. Uh, that is single braid rope, and when we squish it, it's super squishy. Uh, it's called single braid rope or hollow braid rope. Yalex is all polyester. Uh, 10X is made by Samson. It's basically the exact same thing, but Yalex is better for a few reasons. Um, uh, New England Ropes, aka Tufelberger, makes one called Merex, N E R E X. Um, but it's a polyester single braid rope. Uh, and then this one is a little different. Um, let me see if there's any questions over here. Da, 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 da. Okay, anyways. Um, so let's look at. And if I may, real quick, uh, we only yes. have a few minutes left. So I just want to remind our audience, you may have joined late, that if you do have a question, go halfway to the middle of the bottom of your Zoom video box, click the QA icon, and go ahead and type a question. Thank you. Go ahead. And Tamla, we have like 10 or 15 minutes left. Is that right? That's correct. 15 minutes. Oh, 15 minutes. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so let's do a totally different hitch now. Um, most of the good advanced friction hitches start by taking wraps with uh, the cord around the rope. So this one is really cool and it comes from um, a gentleman who I don't know personally, but his name's Sam Cooper and he creatively named it the Cooper Hitch. Much like the VT, you start by wrapping it up the rope. Uh, here I'll do, I got five wraps and we're going to experiment live on camera. That might be too many wraps. And instead of braiding it around the rope itself, all he did was twisted it, the cord around itself. And then at this point you get a little bit of, um, creativity on your end. You can either clip into that or you can put it around like this. So I'm going to use it in this configuration right here. We'll see how well it works with the orange pulley. Okay. So you can see this kind of weird twisty bit out here. Um, it's serving a similar purpose as the, the wraps were, excuse me, the braids were in the VT. Um, when we clip in, we pull down and uh, it crunches up a little bit here. I think what's happening is some of the friction is getting transferred into the twists and um, before it goes into the wraps. So it doesn't require as much pressure. Um, the, the wraps don't have to twist around as tight to hold your weight. So let's see. Okay, cool. It's letting me down nice and easy. It's grabbing on when I let go. Oh, this one's it's nudging a little bit. So I might, I might want to add one more wrap to it, but 
I would climb on this. It seems to be working just fine. And then of course we want to see the cool part. This thing tends so smoothly. And uh, I don't know what it is about this weird configuration. I never would have thought that that would actually work, but I'm glad that Sam Cooper figured it out, put pictures of it on the internet and, and let us all try it out. It's just so freaking smooth. I think it's amazing. Uh, it's a fun hitch to use. Uh, another one we'll do, um, I think we're just gonna do one more. Uh, the the Michoacan, which some people refer to as the Martine, because it was conceived of by a very awesome dude named Martin. And in the ultimate act of humbleness, everyone started calling it the Martin Hitch. And he said, no, 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 I don't want this to be about me. And, and he said, call it Michoacan because that's where I'm from. And, and and that's more important than who I am. And I thought that was super cool. So, um, uh, Martin, if someone, someone send him a link to this so he can, he can see that. But, uh, so if you were to tie a Blake's hitch, let's go do a four, five. We're going to go over one. So this is a Blake's hitch. You guys all know it. And here we don't have to tie a stopper knot in it because theoretically, that stitch right there should act as a stopper. We could, we could have the same functionality with this teeny tiny little Blake stitch as we would with a big giant Blake stitch, except now we've put it really close to our climbing line, like super duper close. So you have it all like really, really close. Um, it's really convenient to use. But what he did was he said, well, I got that little tail hanging there. Let's hook that into the system. Let's make the tail captive as part of the whole system. And it makes it, uh, if I have enough wraps, we might not have enough wraps, but oh yeah, it's not grabbing on. I might have to um, uh, tease it to grab. Yeah, so okay, let's add one more. So that was, Five over one, I think. So we're gonna go five over. Two. Coconut water. I can already tell it's gonna grab a lot better. Yeah. There is a question, Nick. Do you mind taking yeah. it? It's, or I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm go for it. Perfect now. time. Slices are interfering with the hitch. Any rule of thumb for how short a Brummel berry can go before it starts to be a bad idea on a hitch cord? Everyone's um, to abbreviate. Yeah. Who asked the question? Nick Hatch. Okay, Nick. Uh, um, if you're doing a locking Brummel splice, you should be able to do a really short tail half a fid length, fid length perhaps. Um, but the other thing to consider is, um, could you just use a different hitch that can work with the splice? Um, kind of like what I showed before with the VT. But you can go pretty short if you're doing a locking Brummel because the Brummel is the splice. Um, okay, so here we are, we've got a five over two and that means I have the tail tucked under the bottom two wraps. And now oh, I've got to grab, get it to grab, which is something you might have to do up in a tree with the advanced friction hitch, um, is sometimes they won't always grab right away. And that's why the Blake's hitch, the B53 version of it is so good because it basically always grabs. But you can see this one sliding. So it's gonna be super smooth for me, but I'm gonna to have to tease it to get it to grab at first. Um, so. For whatever reason, when I do this with my spliced, uh, the spliced one grabs really good. Um, speaking of which, Nick Hatch, uh, this one goes one, two, three, four, and five. I think I normally do a five over one. We have probably around 
just uh, under 10 minutes left. That sound about right? Correct. Eight minutes left. Okay, this is going to be perfect timing to talk about the super duper mega advanced hitches. Um, so it's always a little messy at first, but now it's grabbing really well. And that's a really good example of a stitch versus a splice. It's working perfectly. And this is, this is the one that I tend, when I'm using uh, an advanced DRT system here, um, this works really, uh, really well for me with the splice hitch cord. Um, the exact same hitch, but you saw the other one wasn't grabbing at all. And this one's grabbing basically perfectly. Um, so let's kick it up a notch in the final eight minutes here. And let's pretend for a moment that we were, yeah, we'll do a base thing here. We're going to do some SRT climbing. And Nick, maybe can you give our audience your contact information if they have additional questions? For instance, is there a reason you changed to the top hole there instead of the middle one? Uh, but do you have contact info after this webinar and an answer to that? Yeah, question? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the easiest way is to go on Instagram at TreeCareLA and you can direct message me there. Uh, and that's probably the best way to do it. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and message me there uh, as well. Um, and a lot of you guys have access to my cell phone number, but I'm not giving it out online. But you're welcome to text me always. Um, and then, Tamala, you had a question. Of, was it about which hole we're is, clipping Is into? there a reason you changed to the top hole there instead of the middle one? And I would like to tell our audience that I did put Nick's Instagram at T-R-E-E-C-A-R-E-L-A -E 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 in the Perfect. chat. Awesome. Um, if I clip to the top one, it was inadvertently. I always like to clip to the middle one to keep everything spaced out. They both will function and both are safe. And there are situations where you, would, you can have two separate systems clipped in at the same time where the top one becomes essential. Um, but if I'm just climbing DRT, my splice die should go in there. Um, uh, okay, now if you are a rope wrench user, all of these hitch cords, hitches that we talked about can be used right here with a rope wrench overhead. Um, and that opens up a whole new world of, of implementing these uh, advanced friction hitches. So we've got about five minutes left and I think it's, we're gonna go to the most advanced of them all, the non, Hitch, hitches. Uh, starting with this dude right here, Petzl Zigzag. Um, the downside to this thing is you've got to feed it on to the end of the rope. So, and you've got to feed the rope down and through. And This one works phenomenally well. Uh, I'm really impressed with how it works. Um, it can work DRT configuration. You notice some similarities here, the three holes. Um, you put your splice this time in the top one. And this uh, little Jacob's Ladder looking thing grabs very reliably on a really wide variety of ropes. Um, and you can also use it in conjunction with the pretzel chicane, which operates uh, using the concepts that Kevin Bingham figured out in, by making the rope wrench. Uh, he developed the rope wrench and then pretzel borrowed his ideas. Um, however you wanna put that. Snap this guy down, clip it onto their proprietary carabiner, it has to be this carabiner. They don't offer a lot of variation. And uh, now in an SRT configuration, you basically have DRT functionality where you can 
advance it one-handed and sit down and it'll grab my anchor sighting, so I'm not gonna fully sit down on it. But that's a super cool, um, you can see the exact same functionality of a friction hitch inside here, but they made it out of metal. Uh, so that's really neat. Um, and then the other really cool one is this funky thing right here. Uh, also from the world of Kevin Bingham. Um, I think it's like the Willy Wonka of, uh, of tree climbing equipment. Pretty sure. Let me slide this thing on. I'm pretty sure he's got a, an awesome lab. I totally just did this wrong. <laughs> Not paying attention. Hold on. Okay. There. And this one goes right. One, two, and then three. And this thing also has really similar um, functionality or, yeah, functionality as a, a hitch. You can see it like collapsing and expanding just like a, a friction hitch knot would, but this time it's getting pinched between these two points up here. And this thing is also amazingly smooth. It's super duper cool. Um, and uh, if you get a chance to climb on one of these, you might not want to do it because it's a little bit expensive and then you'll have to buy one. Um, mm -hmm. So, excuse me? Second row. Awesome, yeah, you guys can follow me on Instagram, Nick. Uh, it's at uh, treecarela.com uh, or you can come find me on Facebook. And uh, that's the Rope Runner Pro, by the way, if anyone's wondering. Um, I think that's it. Thank you guys for joining in. I hope you learned at least one thing out of this. Uh, let me know if you have questions.